Welcome to the ninth in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We've been talking about measurement. We've been talking about using statistical methods to uh, analyze data that involve measurement error. To this point, we've used simple methods that are that appear in every elementary statistics course that's essentially ever been taught. We're going to begin to do something a bit different in Module 9 and use a somewhat non-standard method, uh, but one that will lead us into the notion of separating components of variation and measurement. Uh, it's an easy to understand method, although it's not standard. Uh, it's, it, it, it's one that that should help us to enter the subject without with a minimum of, of confusion. So here's where, we, we're, where we're going to begin. We've noticed that if one makes repeated measurement of a single measure in with a single device, uh, one sees variation that we've called sigma device. On the other hand, if single measurements are made on multiple measure ends, from a stable process, uh, what one sees in terms of variation is a standard deviation that is a combination of the process standard deviation and the measurement variation. Uh, it seems like if we can estimate sigma y and sigma device, we somehow ought to be able to estimate sigma x by using data of these two kinds, the first kind and the second kind here. That's illustrated on this slide. Here we have two data sets. The, we're thinking about this first data set as coming from multiple measure ends taken from a stable process with a mean mu sub x and a standard deviation sigma sub x. So that these, this first set of measure ends have mean mu for the process plus the device bias and have variation that is a combination of the process standard deviation and the measurement standard deviation that is this quantity. In addition to that first data set, we're going to think of a second data set that is derived by making multiple measurements on a single measure end. All the time we're thinking about using a single measurement device. And the second data set then has is coming from a data generating mechanism that has mean that is the uh, last measure in plus the device bias and the standard deviation here is the uh, is only the device bias. Uh, these two data sets could be processed into sample average and sample standard deviation and in this module we're going to focus mostly on what can be done with these two sample standard deviations. What we're going to do is think about the fact that this first sample standard deviation estimates this combination of sigma sub x and sigma sub device, sigma sub device while well, the second estimates only sigma sub device. So in fact if we took the difference of those two not standard deviations but their squares, the variances, uh, that difference should be estimating the standard deviation for the process only. Uh, typically this difference will be non-negative uh, because the, the first of those two figures is, is estimating something larger than the second, but on occasion uh, that difference will turn out to be negative. Uh, 
we're going to try to do things on a standard deviation scale, so we want to take a square root here. And we don't want to be in the business of taking the square root of a negative number. So in the event that that difference in sample standard deviations is negative, we'll replace it with zero. Uh, when all is said and done, this quantity is going to be something that we're going to think about using to estimate the process standard deviation alone. Uh, we can not only make this single number estimate or make a single number estimate in this way, but we can use this quantity as the basis for making confidence limits. Uh, what we need to do is to take this quantity and hedge it above and below by appropriate uh, factors that are essentially uh, chi-square factors. Uh, degrees of freedom, uh, we're going to use a, a so-called Satterthwaite approximation in a somewhat odd-looking formula for getting uh, quote-unquote approximate degrees of freedom. That formula involves the estimate uh, sigma sub x hat. Uh, if you'll look carefully at this, you will see that there's a fourth power in the numerator and there's a fourth power of the uh, standard deviations in the, in the denominator. So in fact, that ratio is unitless as it should be. Uh, we will uh, compute that and then we'll round down uh, to an integer degrees of freedom. Uh, so if we get 11.2, we'll round down to 11.0. That that will tend to make this uh, make these limits is a little bit wider than if we round it up, uh, and uh, that's a good thing because this is a very uh, sort of uh, approximate or ad hoc methodology. So we want to be a little bit conservative. Uh, so as an example, in module five, we considered measurements made by a single anal analyst on a single physical specimen of material, uh, five of which produced a standard deviation of 0 0.012. Uh, suppose now that subsequently uh, that same analyst comes back and measures samples from 20 different batches. Uh, and so we could expect that there would be batch to batch variation as well as measurement variation. And it's uh, plausible that one might get, say, a standard deviation of 0 0.03, something larger than 0 0.012, uh, based, on a, uh, based on those 20 subsequent samples. If one then uh, processes those two standard deviations, in this way, uh, takes the square of the big uh, of, of of the second one minus the square of the first. Uh, in this case, that difference is positive, uh, so we don't have to substitute zero. So we take the difference, we take the square root. There is a uh, standard deviation that is somewhat smaller than this one, and corrects for the fact that the 0 0.03 value is estimating more than sample to sample variation. That is, it also includes measurement variation. And so this, this more or less factors that out. If we want to make confidence limits, we need these Satterthwaite approximate degrees of freedom. Uh, if we take this 0.0275, raise it to the fourth power. Here are the two standard deviations raised to the fourth power. These divisors are the sample sizes minus one in both cases, the degrees of freedom. Uh, that ratio turns out to be 11.96. Uh, following our rule of rounding down, we'll round down to 11. Uh, so here is degrees of freedom 11. And then we'll make approximate 95% confidence limits for the process standard deviation by taking the 0.0275 and 
hedging it up and down by these factors. Those factors are the square root of the degrees of freedom over chi-square 11 percentage points. Uh, this is the upper 2.5% point. This 3.816 is the lower 2.5% point. And so those limits make approximately 95% limits. This idea of taking the difference of a couple of uh, standard deviations applied or derived in, uh, applied to uh, data collected in a couple of different ways, uh, we can make a different use of this that will allow us our first look at the notion of separating uh, repeatability variation from reproducibility variation. Uh, so here's what we're going to think about doing. Uh, we're going to think about taking a single measurand and having it measured by multiple devices. Typically these multiple devices would consist of uh, different operators using the same piece of physical equipment. Uh, so we, we're using this word device uh, to describe the, the combination of operator plus equipment. Uh, we'll suppose that each operator has a different has potentially a different bias. Uh, so there are, there are deltas 1 through uh, n1 there, or sorry, 1 through n. Uh, measure each, measure that measurand once for each device producing data set 1. Okay, that will make a data generating mechanism that has average the measurand plus the mean bias and has standard deviation now that is the device bias sorry the device standard deviation squared plus something that measures the variability in these deltas so we'll talk about a standard deviation of device biases a sigma squared a sigma sub delta that we square to make a variance. That's data set number one. Data set number two takes a potentially different measure in uh, and uh, runs it through one uh, measurement device multiple times to produce a second data set. Uh, and that process is a data generating mechanism that makes uh, data with mean the second measure in plus this device bias for this last uh, measurement device and a, a sigma device so throughout this whole thing we're, we're assuming that, that uh, a sigma device is constant repeatability is constant if the difference between the devices is just difference between operators. Uh, in this second context, if we take the difference between the square of S sub Y and the square of this S, uh, what we've got is a way to estimate the variability in the device biases. And that variability in the device biases in an R and R context is exactly operator to operator uh, variation. And so this quantity is a kind of uh, re reproducibility standard deviation. Uh, so here's an example uh, in the kind of measurement uh, example it's done in IE 361. Uh, you could suppose that a single student measures a styrofoam packing peanut five times producing a data set with a sample standard deviation of 0 0.012 inches. 
subsequently several different students, six in fact, measure a single peanut once each with a resulting uh, stand with a resulting standard deviation of uh, 0 0.03 inches. If one takes the difference between, sorry, 0 0.03 inches, if one takes the difference between the square of the 0 0.03 and the square of the 0 0.012, uh, there is now a 0 0.0275 uh, inch standard deviation that is a standard deviation that measures differences between the operators. That's a, that is a reproducibility standard deviation. Uh, that can, confidence limits can be made for that uh, by again finding a Satterth weight degrees of freedom. In this case it, the degrees of freedom is 3.42. We take the Point of 0 0.0275 and hedge it by these uh, uh, factors that are square root of degrees of freedom over chi-square values. Uh, this gives us a gives us confidence limits for reprodu reproducibility standard deviation. That reproducibility standard deviation, the thing that we called sigma sub delta. Uh, measures operator to operator variation. If we simply take the multiple measurements made on a single uh, peanut by a single operator, uh, then we have uh, these limits. These, this, is, this is just the ordinary one sample uh, chi-square confidence limits and those turn into 0 0.017 inch to 0 0.112 inch. At the end of the day here, we have something that tells us that essentially these two kinds of variation look to be roughly comparable. There's as much variation between operators as there is for uh, a a single operator, or put it differently, there's as much inconsistency for a single operator as there is inconsistency between operators.